35mm lenses, are they more than just a great portrait photography lens? Absolutely, yes. Let's talk about it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. This week, of course, is no different. We are going to be talking about 85mm lenses. Now, these are some of my favourite lenses to use for all kinds of photography. I love that focal length. Obviously, they make a great portrait option. You really get to isolate your subject in the frame. You can use focal length compression, which I think looks fantastic. They usually have a nice fast aperture, so you get some beautiful bokeh. But they really focus in on your subject. And I've talked about this before when we've done videos comparing 85 millimeter lenses to 35 mil. I feel like 85 millimeter lenses tell the story of who your subject is, whereas a wider lens like a 35 mil for portraits will tell the story of where your subject is. Now, I love that storytelling ability with an 85mm lens, but I love using those lenses for all kinds of photography. And you can absolutely take some of the great characteristics that make it great for portraits and apply those to other types of photography like landscape, like street, food photography, product photography, all kinds of different stuff. Now, the main characteristic that I think 85mm lenses are able to bestow upon your photos is the ability to force you to choose a subject within the frame. It's a tighter lens than you might use for landscape, for example. In general, I would often use a 24 to 70 for landscape, so an 85 mil is a little bit tighter. It's got the ability to use a nice fast aperture. You know, you've got a bit of focal length compression, and because it's tighter, and because of all those different things, it really pushes you to find the subject in your photo. Now, we've talked about this before with stuff like landscape photography. Finding a subject within your landscape can really improve your landscape photos. It can really inform your composition and inform the way you're going to take the photo. It also creates a natural resting place for the viewer's eye. So when they're actually looking at the photo, they have a place that they naturally come back to with their eyes. It makes it much more comfortable to view the photo and, and not kind of a strain to look around. They can still explore other parts of the photo, but they have a natural place, an anchor, if you like, to come back to within the photo. And that's really important, both in landscape, but in street, in food, in product photography, you want to have a nice defined subject. Now I've fallen into this trap a bunch of times before, not with an 85 mil, but with a wider lens, especially with landscape, of finding a beautiful view, and taking a photo of it, but there's no defined subject. So it doesn't really work as a photo. It's a beautiful view to look at, but it doesn't necessarily work as a photo. But an 85 millimeter lens forces you much, much more heavily to find that subject within the photo. And you can then do things like use a fast aperture to actually isolate it even more within the landscape. So the foreground's gonna start going out of focus, maybe the background's gonna start going out of focus, that can look fantastic. You can use focal length compression to get a really nice look. This can work well for both vistas, where you might have something like a lighthouse in a big landscape, or in a forest, you know, where you can shoot through the trees, or something like that. There's lots of different options, and lots of different kind of ways an 85 millimeter lens can make those things work. Of course, with street photography, this really helps as well. Now, I, I love approaching street photography in the same way I would approach a portrait. You know, find my subject, and obviously, generally, they don't know necessarily that I'm taking a photo of them. I want to get a candid photo. So I'm not waiting for them to pose perfectly. I'm waiting for the perfect moment to happen. Or maybe I find the perfect spot, a, a shaft of light hitting a particular place, and I wait for someone to walk through that. But with an 85 millimeter lens, the photo is going to be much more personal. It's going to be much more about this particular subject rather than kind of a wide snapshot photo. And I really, really like the storytelling ability of that and the fact that it forces you to find that subject in your street photos. Now, I use this for food, for product photography. Admittedly, I have to then pull back a little bit, get the camera a little bit further away because it is a bit tighter. But that can work really well as well to, to isolate a specific subject within that frame. So it's a great option for really finding and forcing you to find your subject. Now, this can be a really useful practice to go and shoot with 85mm lens. To, if you've never done it before and you have one that you use for portraits, to go and shoot some landscapes, some street, maybe some food or product photography, all kinds of different things with an 85mm lens. Because even if you don't end up using that as your go-to lens for different things later, it will force you, like I say, to find that subject. And that skill 
is then going to carry over when you use a 24 to 70 or a 16 to 35 or whatever it is you then use later on. That skill to find that subject is going to be really, really useful. It's going to improve overall your photography. So an 85 millimeter lens in that sense can be a really useful tool to actually improve your overall photography. But what do you think? I also love a 50 mil lens. And I think that can do is a very similar kind of thing, but with 85 mil, because it's a bit tighter, it just forces you even, even more strongly to find that subject. But I'd love to hear your opinions down in the comments. Absolutely, let me know. I love reading through your comments. Of course, if you wanna check out all the gear and stuff you use for this video and all these photos, that's all down in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well if you enjoyed the video, because we've got new stuff all the time. I will, of course, see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.